We are on page 134. Yep. Shabbos, chapter 19, Rebbe Eliezer de Miller. And we're starting from the second line. Lo shachak me'erev Shabbat. So the Mishnah said, if one didn't crush coming on Shabbos Eve, and you can chew it and use it as a salve, is that right? Yeah. And also it says, do not be, if one did not vigorously mix wine and oil on Shabbos Eve, each of these ingredients should be placed in a bowl by itself. What do you understand to mean by that? What I understand it to mean is that the, and I think it becomes clear as it moves through, okay. um, that the normal thing to do is you put the two ingredients together and then you beat them up. As opposed to? As to, opposed to applying them separately on Shabbat. Yes, so on Shabbat, what do you do? You, you put one on, from, and then you put the other one on over. Ah, and then not beat it, not mix well, it? You, well, you effectively mix it on uh, the wound or whatever you're applying it to. Ah, you know, you, okay. You put a layer of oil down and the, what was the other thing? Oil, oil and wine. And wine. You put down some wine and put some oil over it. Uh-huh. Okay. Tan Rabbanan, the rabbis taught, Devarim she'enos sin lemila b'shabbat, things we may not do for a circumcision on Shabbat, or sin la b'yom tov, we can do it for a festival day, shochakin la kamon, i.e., we may crush kamon for it, v'torfin la yayin v'shemen, and we can vigorously mix wine and oil. So it's saying on festivals you can do this, and on Shabbos you can't. What's uh, what's uh, why is common? Yeah, why is common different on a festival day? The chazi likdera because common is fit for a pot. Yain the shemen chazi nami v'shabat lachole, and also wine and oil are fit for fit for are fit also on Shabbat for a sick person. To Tanya, who's taught in a Baraisa. Yeah. Uh, it says, Kamen, uh, when it says it's fit for a pot, the Chaze Likdera, it means that it's an ingredient for cooking, which yes, you can do on your own. He's expanded that house about a phrase uh, Suitable for use to spice a pot in cooking. And then cooking. the other one says about the wine and oil, they're fit also for a sick person. Do you understand what it means? Based on that, mixed wine and oil are also suitable for use on Shabbat for a sick person, ah, as it was taught in a price. Uh-huh. Ain yain v'shemen l'chole v'shabbat. We may not vigorously mix wine and oil for a sick person on Shabbat. Amar Rabbi Shemur ben Elaz HaMishom Rabbi Meir. Af torfin yain v'shemen. We may also vigorously mix wine and oil for a sick person. Amar Rabbi Shemur ben Elaz HaMishom Hush, Rabbi Meir Bemeav, once Rabbi Meir was experiencing intestinal pain. Uvi Kashnu, Uvi Kashnu, the floor, Yain Veshem, and we wanted to mix vigorously oil and wine uh, as a medicine for him. Velo Hinacho, Hinachu, sorry, Hinachanu, Hinichanu, and he did not allow us. Amarnu lo. We said to him, Shall your words be nullified in your lifetime? Which means you permit mixing these ingredients for a sick person. Ah, Amalanu. And he said to us, Thank you. Afal Pisha Ani Omer Kach Vechaverai Omrim Kach. Even though I say thus, my colleagues say thus, Miyamai Lo Milani. Milani libi lavor al divrei chaverai. Throughout my days, I've never presumed to transgress the words of my colleagues. Ah, so he doesn't want to go against what others say. He still holds to his opinion, but he doesn't want to go against the others. So it's okay for others to follow his opinion, but he's not willing to publicly go against the opinion of his colleagues. Right. 
who nihu de machmir an anafshe. Now it's Rebbe Meir who is strict on himself in regard to mixing oil and wine. Aval lechule al mashare. However, everyone else he permits it. Hatam la ba'elicha. There in the brisa, the mixture of oil and wine does not require a beating. Hacha ba'elicha. And here in the Mishnah. The mixture does require vigorous beating. Uh, so Rebbe Meir forbids that. The Gemara asks, Hachanami ni avid velo leilach. Here also, with Mila, let us prepare uh, the oil mine and not beat it. Hainu de katane. This is what a Mishnah was talking about when it said, Noten. Ze bifne atmo ve ze bifne atmo. One may place each of these by itself. Ah, okay. Tan Rabbanan, Rabbi Zod Rosa. Ein mesaninin et hachardal be mesanen et shelo. We may not strain mustard seed through its own strainer. This is on a festival. On a, on a Yom Tov. Mm. So, you know, through its own strainer. Be ein mam. Mam tekinoto bega chelet. No way may we sweeten it with a burning coal. So, so straining mustard seed through its own strainer. Straining separates the seed from the outer husks. Ah, so in Yom Tov you can't strain the mustard seeds from the outer husk. Rashi says. Uh, Okay, and the burning coal makes it a better taste. Ah, and the coal needs to be extinguished, which would be forbidden on the yom on yom. Mm. Okay. Um, Apparently, there are two types of coal. Amalei abayi la rav yosef meish na mecha ditnan. For what uh, is this different from what we learned in the mishnah? Not nimbeza bimisanenet shel chardal. We can put a raw egg into a mustard strainer uh, and strain it to improve the mustard appearance, which is permitted on Shabbos. Amale. He doesn't expand on what purpose this would fulfil anyway. He just says, "Yeah, one may place an egg in a mustard strainer." So it says here, since this act is permitted even on Shabbos, why is straining mustard through its own strainer forbidden on Yom Tov when preparing and cooking food is permitted? Amalei, Rav Yosef said to Abayi, Hatam la mechazei kevorer. There, with the egg, it does not appear as though you're sorting. Hacha, and here, mechazei kevorer. It appears as though you are sorting the mustard seed. And the that goes on. As I don't know enough about mustard seeds, I, you know, I can't visualise what they're talking about. The only mustard seed I've seen is stuff you use in Indian cooking, where you you throw it in. And it's pretty big, isn't it? It's not that big. It's like sesame yeah. seeds. Oh yeah, I could mm-hmm. be. It's about half the size of a peppercorn. No, 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 no. I've seen. Okay. Anyway. Anyway, it's sort of whatever, it's sort of not... I, I, I don't see, I don't understand what, what you'd strain it for. Or it, says, it says this is not actually sorting, since the, this is the note, since the material left in the strainer is also edible, which is discussed in the number six pages. Hence, it is only rabbinically forbidden. Oh, okay, so it's a rabbinical prohibition. The aim mamtikin mamaskin, sorry, otobe gachelet. Normally we sweeten it with a burning coal. Bad tanya, it was sort of a brisa. Mamaskin otobe gachelet, we may sweeten it with a burning coal. Lokashia. Um, ah, so another brisa says you can sweeten it with mm. burning coal. What's the contradiction? Lokashia. Kan be gachelet shel matechet. Here, with the lenience, it's talking about a glowing metal coal, can be shell it. While there, with a stringer oiling, 
It's a glowing wooden coal. Which would have to be charcoal. Hmm. But I wonder what a metal coal is, whether it's what we would regard as coal. You know, anthracite or whatever it's called. Oh, yeah. what have we done? And he doesn't offer any clarification on the different types of coal. What I was when I read this, I thought maybe what they're talking about is uh, if you're talking about sweetening it, maybe they were talking about um, say reducing charcoal <coughs> to powder and mixing it through mm. to take away sharpness or something like that. Right. But um, I mean, if I'm you're not talking, sure about, talking about that, no. If you're talking about a hot coal, that's not what would happen. Because he doesn't talk about hot coal here. Yeah. He just talks about metal coal or wood coal. So, really they're talking about stirring it with a hot implement. Maybe. Which would tend to roast it. Yeah. Maybe roasting sweetens it. Um, yeah. I wonder if you think... Do you, do you roast mustard things? Do you toast mustard things? You do if you're doing Indian cooking. You fry it in oil and uh, fry it, you know, briefly, mm. 30 seconds or so to release the oils and the aromas. Yeah, I don't think that might be something to do with it. First one. Anyway. Um, you can also do it, do it in a, a dry pan. Yeah. I've seen that done in dry pan, but you well, have to that be quick be, so it doesn't burn. That wouldn't be so different to a glowing metal cork. Uh, no. Amar no. Leah Baylor of Yosef. My shna mibish, sorry, mibishra agumre. What is different from roasting meat on burning coals then? And he's added here, which is permitted even if the coals are extinguished by the blood dripping from the meat. Mm. Then it goes round from Amale, Yosef said to him. Yeah, Amale, Hatam, Lo Esha. There it's impossible to roast the meat on Yom Tov Eve and for it to be taste, as tasty as when it is roasted on Yom Tov itself. Therefore, roasting on Yom Tov is permitted. So there it's impossible, hacha esha, and here it is possible. Well, what he's got is yeah. there with regard to me, it is not possible to accomplish this in any other way. But here, with regard to mustard, it is possible to accomplish this in another way. Mm. So I think what we were talking about throwing meat on the coals is something closer to a barbecue. Yeah. What is the law about making cheese on your Yomtah? And what reason is this different from kneading dough, which is permitted on Yomtah? So you're not allowed to make cheese on Yomtah according to Rabbi Yosef, mm -hmm. and Abai asks what's the difference from kneading dough. Amale, Rabbi Yosef answered, Hatam, lo efsha, there it's impossible to knead dough for immediate baking on Yom Tafiv. There, with regard to dough, it is not possible to bake bread before a festival, <laughs> as day-old bread is inferior to fresh bread. Mm. Therefore, kneading dough to bake bread on a festival <coughs> is permitted. Here it's possible. Here, with regard to cheese, it is possible to curdle cheese before a festival and it will not deteriorate in ah, any way. Very good. But the Nehadayans have said that freshly made cheese is excellent. Sages Nehazah said thus, the Philogavina bat your mama alia. It is true that even freshly made cheese is excellent, but the one made yesterday is even better. 
the longer it's aged, the better it is. In la haluk kule, we may not fashion a shirt like bandage for the shmeckle. What way do they use that? The member? Um, he just says, on Shabbat one may not make a pouch to place over the circumcision as a bandage. Aha. <coughs> uh, uh-huh. Abaya said, my mother, it's a long thing on the what his mother, who according to Steinsaltz was not his mother, was actually his foster mother, who was the nursemaid who raised him. Was we talked about that previously. Have we? I had forgotten it. Yeah. Um, there was something else about that. There was another story. But he seems to have been tremendously. Amar Abayam Rali N. Abaya was an orphan, according to Kiddushin 31b. He often quoted the nurse who raised him, referring to her as mother. Yeah, that's why I was going to say that. She must have been uh, an exceptional woman, given the times uh, that the way <coughs> women were regarded largely, mm-hmm. you know, as sort of dispensable. <coughs> um, that he must have he um, continues to talk to her about her this way yeah. when he's an authority. Yes, uh, and uses her as mm-hmm. an authoritative yes. source. Uh, mother told me, Hai chaluk dinuk kalafane lesitra leilai, the hem of this infant's shirt like bandage should be turned upward. Dilma midabek garda mine, lest a thread from it stick to the wound. Good idea. But ate lide karut shafcha, and possibly when the bandage is removed, the infant might become uh, mutilated. Mm. And he gives what the mutilation is, uh, a severed urethra, mm. which is the... The pipe. Yeah. Um, Ime de Abaye avda kistata lefalga, but Abaye's mother would make a lining for half of the bandage. Ah, so... The particular it seems that the particular part that went over the very tip of the mm. penis, she would make a special lining for it, like a, a silk lining or something like that, maybe. So it wouldn't. So it'd be, yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. Amar Abaye, hai yenuk delet lechaluk. This infant, who does not have, do you, do you have a, a shirt like bandage, or just a bandage? If this baby does not have a pouch, he keeps referring oh, to the pouch. pouch. Okay, so we'll say pouch. Uh, what's it the like you look at lately? Same oh. function as one of those things that cricketers wear. A I should imagine. Yeah. Uh, so this infant who does not have a pouch, layete belita de itle sifta, bring a rag that has a hem. Velichreche le sifta le tatai. And tie the hem around at the bottom, but ayef lay li'ilai, and double over the top end upward. So that the threads from the worn out garment will not adhere to the wound. Which is exactly what his mother told him, pretty yeah. much, right? Um, Vamar Abay Amra Li'em, and Abaya said, Mother told me, Hai Yanuk Dala Yidia Mepatke, this infant whose anus. Do you have anus? Whose exit, that is anus, ah, is unknown. Who's it's sort of grown over. Uh-huh, is, it says it's not discernible. Yes. Le shaife mishcha velokme lahade yoma, rub him with oil and stand him against the sun, the heka de zig, and where the skin appears transparent, likare bisarta shti ve'ereb, tear it crosswise with a barley grain, which is very sharp, I've eaten barley grains. Uh, you're, you're tearing a membrane, basically. Yeah, and it'll probably be very soft. 
well, it, it'd be sharp, the pointy end would be sharp. But I think this whole point from the rest of the comment, <coughs> it would be cleaned. Clean. Whereas if you're using metal, it would be some knife or something. Aval bichli meant matachot lod, but don't do it with a metal instrument, mishum desarak, because that causes inflammation, swelling. And there's a little side note here. Mm. A baby whose exit is unknown mm. may refers to a congenital defect known as atresia ani. The obstruction of the anal cavity, this defect can be surgically corrected. Interesting. M, and my mother also told me, Hayinuk de la Mayet, this infant who cannot suckle, Mekar hud karpume, it is uh, because his mouth is cold, Mayet kanse, what's the remedy? Layetu kasa gumre, bring a cup of burning coals, Velik. Velin kate le lehade pume, and stand it near the infant's mouth. De chayem pume, so his mouth will become warm on my head, and he will suckle. Vamarabayam re le em. Mother told me, Hai nukodilom menashti, this infant who does not breathe, lin pefe benaf vata, fan him with a fan, or menashti, and he will breathe. Vamarabayam re le em. That's interesting. Yeah. Because here he goes from warming the mouth to a baby that does not urinate. Let one place him in a sieve and shake him. He will urinate. And then it goes on to the baby who's not breathing. Wow. So this has no mention whatsoever. Uh, the baby that refuses to nurse, there's a side note here. Occasionally, cold temperatures can suppress muscular activity, including in the mouth. <laughs> Consequently, the baby is unable to nurse. Warming the child helps in those cases. So there's a medical basis for that, as well as for the child with the membrane over the bottom hole. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the infant who does not breathe easily. Yeah? Yeah. Uh the ime bring his mother's afterbirth for the sharke ilave, slide it over his flesh. Umave and he will breathe easily. The Marabayamra That could be the warmth again. Yeah. You know, the child comes out in shock, doesn't oh. breathe, and you put the warm placenta on. Good one. Mamara baye amra liem. Hai inukut the katin, the infant who is emaciated. La yeto le silyata dime, bring his mother's afterbirth. The lisharke ilave mikutna le ulma, slide over his flesh from its narrow end to its wide end. This bit, I think, is folk medicine. The uh, ELM, and if the infant is bloated, he's got it strong, but then he adds, that is too large. Ah, ma'ulma lakutna, from its wide end to its narrow end. Aha. I see what you're saying. The marabaye, hang on, 44. Mother told me, Hi, and look at the sumak, this infant who is red, the akati lo ibala be dama, because his blood is still not absorbed into his flesh, literhu le ad de ibala be dama. Wait for him until his blood is absorbed into his flesh, vilim haluha. And then circumcising that sounds like jaundice, perhaps? Mm, next one's jo- probably oh. jaundice. The Arok Vakati Lo Nafal Be Dame, if he's yellow and it's because his blood is deficient, Literhu Ad De Nafal Be Dame, wait until he's full blooded, Vili Mahaluha. And then there's side note here, the red and pale child. 
Several medical explanations were proposed to identify the disease from which the baby is seen by the Rabbi Natan was, this is from later on, was suffering. With regard to the child who was read, some presume that the children of that family suffered from a rare hereditary blood disease known as purple disease, purpura hemorrhagica. The child who was pale was probably sick with a hemolytic jaundice of the newborn, which is also hereditary. Mm-hmm. So that relates to something a bit further on. Not much further on. But, you know, that. And in both cases, you wait until the kid achieves a normal color before you circumcise. You know, um, if you consider that there were probably, that there weren't very large populations in those days, was there? I mean, it's not like you had one of these things come up every day or every week. Well, couldn't possibly. It depends know. where you're talking about. In uh, area call about, say, Palestine, mm. you probably didn't have many really big towns. But in Babylonia, Babylon was a major city, probably. Mm. I'm only guessing, but I probably had a couple of hundred thousand people. Mm. I think Rome was the first Western city to get to a million. But, you know, we're looking at, you know, populated 60,000 and upwards for the big cities in these areas. Not Jews or... No, I mean just generally. people. Mm. But presumably the other people have the same problems that our kids would. You reckon? Uh, That's part of what I was getting at. Like if it's hereditary then... It might be endemic to the Jewish people. Ah, uh, you're thinking of some of the diseases that we now have to watch out for. Yeah. It could be, could be. Titania Sonabrasa, Ama Rabbi Natan. Pama Khatalakti Lisrake Hayam, I went went to the once I went to the sea towns or such as Tyre. Uva Uvat Ishalafana, a woman came before me. Shemala Bena Rishon Umet, who had circumcised her first son and he died. Sheni Umet, second son, died too. Shlishi Heviatu Lafanai, now she brought her third before me for guidance. Reitiv Shehu Adom, I saw that he was red, the infant. Amati La Hamtini Ad Shibala Bodamo. I told her, wait for him until his blood is absorbed into his flesh. His flesh she waited for him until his blood was absorbed into his flesh. She circumcised him then and he lived. And they called it the child Matan, the Babylonian after me. It's very nice. <coughs> Interesting, because there's a second case here. Sure. Oh, so here. Ah, Shuv halachti l'midinat Kapotkia, Cappadocia. Turkey. Oh. He, he, I mean, this man really travelled. He's based in Babylon. Yeah. He's been to the coastal areas of the Mediterranean, and mm. then he goes up to Turkey. Mm. Maybe he caught a flight. On another occasion, I travelled to the province of Cappadocia. Uvat Isha Achat Lefanai, the woman came before me, and one woman came before me, Shemala Bna Rishon Umet, but circumcised her first son and he died, Shni Umet, the second son he died, Shlishi Heviatul Lefanai, she brought the third son before me for gardens, Riiti Shehu Yarok, he was yellow, Hetzat Dibo, I looked closely at him, Belore Dibo Dambarit, I did not see in him. Covenantal blood, meaning she hadn't circumcised him yet? He says he had a blood deficiency. No, there was no blood in his penis. No blood whose flow would be caused by circumcision. Well, this this is not the way he takes it here. But their uh, expansion 
fits in better with the idea of blood of the covenant. Amarti la hamtini lo adshi pogotamo, why fame and is full blooded. Behim tinalo, and she waited for him to become full blooded, um allow to vachaya, vahayo karin. So he lived the Hayo Karin Shmo Natana Babli Al Shmi. We call his name Natana Babylonian after me. Interesting here. Who is it who's circumcising the child? The women. Mm. And it sort of a nice parallel with uh, what happened with uh, Moshe's children where, right. where the, the mother circumcises the child yeah. to save her husband and Tells him you're a bridegroom of blood to me. That's right. Very good. Yeah, sort of ties. Child's life. To save your life. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, it just occurred to me now. I was thinking about that. Mishnah. Ma chitzin et hakatan, we can bathe the infant. It would mean to be in warm water or hot, heated water. Ben lifne hamila or ben lachar hamila, both before and after the circumcision. Umezal fin alav beyeraval lo bichli. We can sprinkle uh, the water on him by hand, but not with a utensil. Rabbi Elazar ben Azari Omer, ma chitzin. Et hakatam biyom hashlishi shechol liyot v'shavat. We can bathe the infant on the third day of after circumcision when it falls on Shabbat. Shneimar vayhi biyom hashlishi biyotam koavim. It says and it came to pass on the third day when they are in pain. This teaches us that on the third day the pain of circumcision poses a danger. Ah, it's the comment. Of course, Steinzel says. And, right, and thus you can alleviate the danger to life. Pikuach nefesh sapek veandroginos, with a, a questionable one or an and hermaphrodite with the word translates here. Someone who's androgynous. But what's a questionable one? A baby. Possibly born during the eighth month of pregnancy. Oh, I see. Meaning, if it was. Meaning, if it was possibly possibly if it was premature. Yeah. Ein machalin alavet haShabbat. We may not desecrate the Shabbat Shabbat on his behalf. The Rabbi Yudamatir beandro beandrogon. Drogginus, but Rabbi Huda permits in the case of a hermaphrodite. Gemara, Baha Mat Resha Marchitzin. But you, the Tana, stated in the first part that we can bathe. And then it follows on and says you can only, that you can sprinkle with water by hand. So which one is it? Rav Yehuda and Rav Baravu Damrei Tavayehu. Rav Yehuda and Rav Baravu both say, Ketatane, the second statement is teaching how to bathe the infant. Marchitzin et hakatan, so we may bathe the infant. Ben lifne mila, ben lacha mila, both before and after the circumcision, uh, but not in a normal way. Ketzad, how? Mezalfin ala be'araval lo bichli. We can sprinkle water on him by hand, but not with the utensil. Ama Rava, he challenges Rava. Oh, Rava challenges, I should say. Vaha marachitin katane. But the Tanakama states, we may bathe. Which doesn't necessarily imply sprinkling. Ela ama Rava. Rava Rava said, Hathi tane. The Tanakama stated this way, marachitin etakatam. We may bathe the infant in hot water. Ben milifne mila, ben lacha mila. Both before and after the circumcision, be your marish and kedrab kedarko on the first day in the normal fashion. Over your mashlishi shecholi your beshabat and on the third day when it falls on Shabbos. Mezal fina la biyadava lo bichli. We may sprinkle uh, the water on him by hand, but not with the utensil. Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah Omer, 
Machitzin etakatem beyom hashlishi shlishi shecholi yer beShabbat. We may bathe the infant uh, in the normal way on the third day when it falls on Shabbat. Shenema vayehi beyom hashlishi beyot sam koavim. And it came to pass on the third day when they were in pain, meaning that there's a risk to life on the third day. Tanya kavate derava. It was taught in a brisa in accordance with Rava. Machitzin. Hakatan ben lifnei mila ben la chamila. We can bathe the infant both before circumcision and after the circumcision. Beyom rishon kedar kop on the first day in the normal way. Ovi ovi amashishli shachol yop shabbat and on the third day when it falls on shabbat. Mezal fin alabia. We can sprinkle uh, ah so and on the third day when it falls on shabbat. Mezal fin alabia. We can sprinkle on him by uh, on him by hand the water. Rabbi Elazar ben Azari Omer marchitzinet. We can bathe the infant in a normal way on the third day when it falls on Shabbat. And even though there is no uh, proof for the matter, the illusion to the matter is stated by and it came to pass on the third day when they were in pain. Uchshehen mezalpin, and when they sprinkle the water on the infant, ein mezalpin lo bechos velo bikara velo bichli, they may sprinkle with neither a cup nor a plate nor a vessel, ella beyad, rather by hand. What was the allusion to the matter? The allusion to the matter is that. And it came to pass on the third day when they were in pain. Yeah, but it says Zecher la davar shneimar. This is where well, he's played into it yes. was, and although there is no absolute proof for this matter, yes. there is an there is an allusion to this matter yes. as it is stated, and it came to pass on the third day when they were in pain, because the pain. Is the source of the sakana, I would say. Atan the Tanakama, we have come to the Tanakama, to the beginning of the Tanakama. Maya fal pisha in raya lezava zef lezava. What? Hey, it's so funny. I was asked the question, I just asked. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What does it mean? And even though there is no proof of the matter, that's a compliment. To you. There is an allusion to the matter. Tomorrow answers Mishum to Gadol Lo Salik Bistra Haya. Because an adult flesh does not heal quickly, Katan Salik Be Bistra Haya, and in a child flesh does heal quickly. Yeah. Because uh, I think it came to pass on the third day of the way pain that relates to what happened at Shem. Um, so we're dealing with adults there who circumcise themselves. Right. And then Jacob's sons take advantage of their incapacity and kill them. Right. But with, so that's an allusion to the danger of the pain of the third day. But does it, the question is, does this apply? We're now talking about babies. Does it apply to babies? Right. Babies heal immediately. Ah. It's saying... So, you know, what's going on here? How, how can you say it alludes to it when you're talking about two different things? One's an adult right. who doesn't heal well, and that's a baby that starts healing straight away. Well, having seen the penis of a little circumcised baby, I can assure you that it's not healed by the third day. Mm. Rashi says exactly what you said. No. Rashi says... The third day for an infant is not suffi- may not necessarily be sufficiently dangerous to warrant the leniency of a normal baby. Uh, a related incident: Hahud at Lakame de Rava. There was a certain person who came before Rava. Ure Ore le Kishmate. Rava instructed the man according to his own teaching, meaning that. Uh, you're allowed to, you're permitted to bathe the infant normally on on the day of circumcision, which is Shabbat. Um, 
Ichalash Rava. Then Rabba, Rava became weak and ill, thinking that uh, the weakness, the physical weakness, was a was a punishment from God mm. for teaching it wrongly. Amar, he said, Ana be, Ana bahade targimna de save lamali. Why, uh, why did I have an issue with the interpretation of the elders, Rabbi Hud and Rabbi Bar Ahu Av Avuha? Amrule Rabbanan the Rava. The Rabbi said to Rava, Vatanya kavatei tema. But it was turned embrace in accordance with Master Rava's opinion, interpretation. Amalehu Rava said to them, Matnitin kavatayehu. De, uh, Daika, the Mishnah is more precise according to their interpretation. Okay, so he says it's not exactly correct, I think. Mimai, uh, based on what do I say that? Mid Kamar Rabbi Elazar ben Azari Omer, based on what Rabbi Elazar ben Azari said in the Mishnah. We may bathe the infant on the third day when it falls on Shabbos. It's well if you say the Tanakama stated that that we sprinkle on the first and didn't mention normal bathing. This is why Rabbi Elazar ben Azariah said to him, We may bathe the infant. Ella Iamrat Tanakama Mahitin Biomarishan Kama, but if you say the Tanakama stated we may bathe on the first day uh Umazalfin Biyom Hashishi and we may sprinkle on the third day. Hi Rabbi Elazar Ben Azariam Mahitin. Then this phrase of the Mishnah, Rabbi Elazar Ben Azari says we may bathe bathe in front on the third day is imprecise. Af marchitin mi baile. It should have said we may also bake him on the third day. That's actually maybe that's a good point. And he says uh, said that one may even wash on the third day, which mm. is a similar sort of thing. Yeah, even is a better word. We may even bathe on the third day. That kind of makes sense, don't you agree? Mm. Um, Kiata Radimi, when Radimi came. Uh, to Babel from Eretz Israel, Amar Rabbi Lazar, he said, Halacha, uh, he said in the name of Rabbi Lazar, Halacha to Rabbi Lazar ben Azaria, Havu ba b'marava, they pondered this opinion in Eretz Israel, Har chatzat kogufo or Har chatzat mila, bathing of the infant's entire body, or bathing of the circumcision. Right, good question. Amalehu hahu, Miravanam Rabbi Yaakov Shemei. One of the rabbis said to his colleagues, and Rabbi Yaakov was his name. Mistabra harchatzat kol gofot, logical bathing of the infant's entire body was permitted. The isalka datach harchatamila. For if it enters your mind, bathing of the circ, uh, only bathing of the circumcision wound, mi gara mechamin al gabe maka. Is that case worse than hot water upon a regular wound, which is permitted on Shabbos? Damar Rav, Rav said, Ein monin chamin ve'ashemen me'al gabe makah be'shabbat. We do not, Rav said, Rav said, we do not prevent hot water and oil upon an ordinary wound on Shabbat. Therefore, it should certainly be permissible to wash the face of the circumcision. Rabbi Stein tells us are extended. Aha. Shall I keep going? Yeah. Matkifla Rav Yosef. Velo shani lach ben chamin shechu chamu b'shabah. But Rav Yaakov, do you not differentiate between hot water that was heated on Shabbos? Lachamin shechu chamu me'er shabbat and hot water that was heated on Shabbos Eve. Good Question. Matkif la Rav Dimi. Rav Dimi challenges Rav Yosef's argument. We made the hacha b'chamin shul chamud b'shabat plige. From what? Uh, based on what? Uh, 
do you say that here in the Mishnah, the Rabbis and Rabbi Elazar ben Nazariah argue about hot water that was seen on Shabbat? Like, why did you bring that up? Dilma bechamishul chamu be'erev Shabbat pligei. Perhaps they argue about hot water that was heated on Shabbos Eve. Right? So don't bring in a new issue to the argument. Let's deal with the with the argument about whether it's the entire body or, or just the shmeckle. Amar Abaye, Ana ba'ay de ishne dishane le. I wanted to answer Rav Timmy's objection. This is another Amara saying this. Bakadam Vashane Le Rav Yosef, but Rav Yosef anticipated and he answers Mipne Shesakanahu Lo. Because withholding hot wa- the hot water is a danger for the infant. Itanami, yeah. it was stated also by others. Ki Ata Ravim, when Ravim came from Eretz Yisrael to Babel. Amar Rabbi Abahu Amar Rabbi Lazar. Vamre la Amar Rabbi Abahu Amar Rabbi Yochanan. Halachak Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah. Ben Mechami Bechami and Shilchamu be Shabbat. Whether in hot water that was heated on Shabbat. Ben Bechami and Shilchamu Meir Shabbat. Ben Harchatsa Kogofo. Whether it's banging the entire infant's body. Bein har chatzad mila, or bathing of the circumcision wound, mifnei shesakanahi lo, because withholding it is a danger to the infant. And there's a little extension here, a bit further up on... I think we should have a party after that. (laughs) Yes, water. Placing hot water heated on Shabbat Eve on a wound violates only the rabbinic decree prohibiting healing, whereas heating hot water on Shabbat violates a Torah prohibition. Ah. Okay. Gufa. Let's get back to the matter. Amarav. Ein monin chamin v'shemin me'al gabe maka b'shabbat. We don't prevent hot water and oil from application upon a wound on Shabbos. Ushmol Amar, not ten chutzlamaka. One should place it beyond the wound, outside the wound, veshotet v'yored lamaka, and it will flow down gently onto the wound. Okay. May tive, they challenge this brisa, with a brisa. Ein not nin shemen v'chamin, we may not put oil and hot water, al gabe moch, onto a soft cloth, litain al gabe maka v'shabat, to place upon a wound on Shabbos. Oh, question mark. To place upon a wound on Shabbat? Is uh, there a question is, for you? Here, is it here a there's stop? no question mark. Here yes. It's just a statement. Oh, actually. Mine has a full stop and a question mark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have a look at it. It's got, it has a full yeah, stop yeah, and then that. a question mark. But they make it, it's a question mark, I think, to show that there's a contradiction here. Because he's got a nice little extension. Yes. The Gemara raises an objection from that which was taught in a browser. One may not place oil or hot water on soft material on a wound on Shabbat. This supports the opinion of Shmuel, who prohibits performing actions that appear to be medical treatment. However, that ruling contradicts the opinion of Rav. The Gemara answers, there, the browser prohibiting prohibited placing oil or hot water on a rag, yes. not because it appears to be a medical treatment, yes. rather it is prohibited due to concern that one might perform the prohibited labour of squeezing. Hatamishum <laughs> Schita Actually after my response to that, which is exactly what they're getting at with that question mark here, the, in, in my book it says, the Gemara diffuses the challenge. <laughs> you know, like everyone in the room is just rolling their eyes. Come on! <laughs> and then, hang on, hang on. Hatam Mishum There, in the bright it's not on account of squeezing. Is on, is on account of squeezing, not grinding. Oh. That's exactly what we're rolling our eyes. 
<laughs> so then the Gemara cites an additional proof. That's what you're coming to now. Tashma, come learn. We may not put hot water and oil onto a sofot. She'al gabe makab shabbat. That is upon a wound on Shabbat. That is on that is on a, upon a wound on Shabbat. So now this is exactly the opposite of what's said above, isn't it? We may not. And this one says we may not. Ah, okay, it's exactly the same. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. Hatam nami They're also it's on a can of squeezing. Tanya kavate tishmuel. It was so embraced in a corner of tishmuel. Ain not near chamim v'shemen al gabe makab b'shabbat. We may not place hot water and oil upon the wound on Shabbat. Aval not in chutz la makab, but we may place them outside the wound. Ve'er shatet ve'er yored la makab, and they may flow gently down to the wound. Tan rabbanan. Rabbi Stuart, not in al gabe makab moch yavesh us fog yavesh. We may place upon the wound a dry cloth or a dry sponge. Avalo gemi gemi avalo gemi yavesh velo ktitin yaveshin, but on a dry reed and not dry cloth reed. Right. Kasha ktitin aktitin. The rule of cloth rags is contradictory to the rule of cloth rags in the second part. So the cloth rags in the first part of the race is contradictory. Cloth rags in the second part of the bracer. Uh, right. What's the difference between dry cloth and dry cloth rags? I see. Do you see that? Mm. Well, he expands on it. Lokasha, there's no difficulty. Ha bechadate, this second ruling is with new rags. Ha atike, and this rule in the first one is with old rags. Ah, so new rags have a healing effect. So, the Tana prohibits their use, and the first ruling where it says is with, that it says it's with old rags, it doesn't have a healing effect, and therefore there's no need to prohibit. That is such a load of crap. Well, it's not. Just think of it. Hang on, I just want to say mm. it's a load of crap in terms of, on the one hand, we say that it's done. It looks like you're squeezing it, so you're not allowed to do it, right? But then you've got two kinds of rags, which they're both stinking of rags, okay? One's dirty. That's exactly the point. The clean rags, which are dry, they're not wet. We're talking about the dry rags, I think here. Yeah. Well, who who puts oil and water on a on a cloth no, but and it squeezes it? But we're not. Well, you can't if it's soaking. You can't avoid squeezing it. I mean, it's the same reason you don't pick up um, uh, a rubber sponge to wash your dishes on Shabbat. You're going to squeeze it. It's okay, rubber is okay. I understood you have to use a brush because it doesn't absorb water, and you can't squeeze it out. Does rubber absorb? Well, it takes. It in. You know, these foam pads that you use for washing up. Foam pads. That's, yes, that's, that's what I was talking about. Sorry. That's what I meant. But what you've got here is new or old rags. And they're talking about something quite practical, it seems to me. New rags, that is, things that are clean, fresh, they may be left over from sewing or whatever. When they used to cover a wound, mm. do not make it, uh, do not give it a, an infection. They protect the wound and to a person who doesn't know about germs or anything, right, they look as if they affect a cure. Because if you put an old rag on it, mm. it gets septic and horrible and nasty, which you expect of a wound. Mm-hmm. So that has no medical effect. But a new rag, Oh, that'll cure. I think that's what's happening. Okay. And that's why you can't put a new rag on it. That makes it logical. Amar Abaye. Shma mina hanik titin masu jirakin brayta. It sounds logical with two kids. Cloth rags. <laughs> new cloth rags cause healing. Safef ve androgon androginos androginos kulei. 
Um, so a questionable one or a hermaphrodite, which says we don't desecrate shops on their behalf. Is this in respect of washing or doing Miller? Do you recall? Uh, well, he says to perform the circumcision, so okay. it's Miller. Tan Rabbanan or Latot, when it says the force, his foreskin shall be circumcised, or Lacho, but Dajoche to Shabbat, the foreskin of one who is certain overrides Shabbat. Only the circumcision of his halachically certain foreskin overrides Shabbat. The loss of Dajoche to Shabbat. But circumcising one who is questionable does not override Shabbat. Michael's going to get a kick out of talking about all things first off tomorrow. Let's have you on. Do you want to say anything before I switch off? No, no.